What's happening everyone? Matt here on the Vinyl Head UK channel and it's about time for this week's vinyl appreciation video. So, a couple of weeks back, I mentioned this in one of my earlier videos, I was down back uh, home visiting, seeing my family, seeing my parents. My dad and I decided to go to the local record store and I spent way too much money on records but I got a nice little haul of records. I had a real good amount of time in there flicking through everything. Got myself plenty of new records. One of which I have sat right next to me here. First record that I own by this band. Technically their first release. It was definitely their first international release. They'd already released a couple of records in Australia where the band hail from. They're probably one of the biggest rock and roll bands ever to grace our earth. They are the one, the only ACDC with high voltage. Check that out. That's a really Really cool looking record. I'm really glad I got this one. Like I said, I picked it up with a few others. So I got home and listened to all of them. Um, one after the other. And just naturally love this one. I've always liked ACDC. It's simple, effective rock and roll. ACDC have stuck to a formula. Right the way through their career. And it has worked very much for those guys. They don't deviate away on their sound. You know what you're going to get from an ACDC record. Some, yeah, a little better than others. But for me, I love them all. You know, just simple, effective riffs. Angus is very much Mr. ACDC. What a band. I've been lucky enough to see him once. Uh, headline at Donington. Back in, uh, I think it was like 2010, with kind of that, I guess you could say, definitive lineup. Um, you know, we still had Malcolm with us at that point. Um, Brian Johnson, Angus, Malcolm, Cliff Williams, Phil Rudd. Yeah, it was such a great time. It was on the Black Eyes tour. I loved every second. Obviously, this is pre. Bron Johnson, this is Bon Scott era. Obviously never got to see Bon Scott live, but I think I'd argue and say I prefer Brian Johnson's vocals. Some people might be like, oh my God, what's he just said? But just for me, I do like him. But that's not to say I don't like Bon Scott. I think he's fantastic. But I think for me, I just prefer Brian Johnson a little bit more. But that's going off on a tangent. Let's look at this record. That's what this video is about. Checking out this record, appreciating this vinyl. So, artwork. There's two different uh, artworks for this record. I think this, if I'm right in saying this is the international version. I think there was a European version maybe as well. I think this is the international version. Of course, there is Angus right there. As he always is, as I say, he's pretty much Mr. ACDC in that trademark schoolboy uniform that we all know. Made very famous by Angus with his, his stage get up that Gibson guitar. It's Angus to a T. Um, the ACDC logo and high voltage up there. That kind of lightning rod um, going through that we kind of associate as well with ACDC. It's cool, I really like it. It's it's very simple, but I really do like it. On the back, we have all sorts of different things. We have like letters, some drumsticks, um, some pictures, all five of the band right there. Um, yeah, all these, all these letters right there. It's kind of interesting. The track listing is very small. It's up here, side one and side two. Let me zoom in right there. Can you see it? Can you see it? There it is. So yeah, interesting back. I really come across an album so far that I own, which kind of has this artwork like that. Now this was released way back when in 1976. This isn't a first pressing though. 
This is a 2009 European remaster, reissue, remastered reissue. Let me get that one right there. Um, that was released by Columbia. It's brand new when I bought it. It's not used, it's not second hand. So artwork, the case, the sleeve is in excellent condition. There's one slight little bend in that top corner, but nothing too noticeable. Um, so yeah, it was bought new for a decent price, record store price. So at least I didn't have to pay postage, which obviously we do on stuff like Discogs and Amazon and everything else. Um, as I say, this was the first international release by the band. They'd already released the Australian um, version of High Voltage and TNT. So this record, this international version, is kind of uh, made up from those two records. They've took songs from the Australian High Voltage and the Australian TNT and put them together uh, onto this to, to do the international version of High Voltage, basically. This was the first one that went out worldwide to the masses and everyone suddenly found out who and what ACDC is about or was about back then. Um, interestingly enough, the critics really did not like it initially. I don't know why. Rolling Stone magazine in particular gave it an absolute damning review, um, called it basically an all-time low for the hard rock genre, which is pretty harsh. Um, you know, it, it's... I don't think it's like that at all, and I'm sure many would agree with me. I kind of feel at times some of these music journeys... I mean, this was reviewed back in pretty much 76 when this album first came out. And Rolling Stone got hold of it and reviewed it. Sometimes I do feel like music journalists just like to write stuff that shocks people. You know, they, they like to provoke people. So I don't know whether this journalist really did feel like this was an all-time low for the hard rock genre. We have to remember back then that stuff like this wasn't heard back in 76. Hard rock and heavier music was still evolving. It's nowhere near what it is today. So it probably was at the time quite different to, to what people were used to. When the band arrived in the UK and into Europe, initially they were put on a lot of punk bills because that's what I think a lot of people labeled ACDC as initially, a punk band. They didn't really know where to fit the band in musically. So punk kind of seemed the logical choice and they got shoved in that direction. So they ended up on bills with the Sex Pistols and the Damned, or at least bands that sounded like that, right in that massive wave of punk. And of course, they'd get on stage and they'd start playing. And it was nowhere near punk. Punk... You know, dare I say it was quite a simplistic form of music. It didn't have the, the intricacies of of metal or, or hard rock, some of these, you know, harder rock bands that came about. It was quite straightforward. Now, ACDC, I think, are a quite straightforward band with their riffs and the rhythm section and everything. But it was a little bit more evolved than punk. So I think it shocked the punk audience. And the punk fans were pretty diehard to punk. It's not like today where we have a massive horizon of different bands and different music. I've mentioned before, I could quite lis happily listen to someone like Cannibal Corpse. And in the next breath, listen to a blues guitarist like Joe Bonamassa. Or... Um, you know, Cadillac Free, a bit of country or, so, you know, bands like that. Back then, if you liked punk, punk was all you listened to. So I think ACDC got a bit of a rough time initially coming over and being put on these punk bills before more bands came about that were in this sort of harder rock genre that could play on these bills with ACDC. Um... Lineup wise, 
So I mentioned about lineup a minute ago. This was obviously Bon Scott era, uh, original vocalist who sadly passed. So Bon Scott on vocals and bagpipes, might I add. We'll come on to that a little bit more in a minute. The brothers Young, so Angus and Malcolm, both on guitar. Malcolm Rhythm, obviously Angus uh, on lead. On bass, we had Mark Evans and then Phil Rudd on drums. Although, for both um, bass and drums, tracks seven to nine had different musicians on. So bass, we had George Young, and then hopefully I pronounce this right, on drums, uh, we had Tony Carrenti. I hope I get that right. I'm sorry if I've got that wrong. Um, so they tracked uh, 7, 8 and 9 on the track listing, um, both bass and drums. I'm not sure on the reason why. I think maybe that had something to do with... Um, Maybe they were off the different albums. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Leave a comment if you know why that is. Um, but yeah, as I say, I think it's a quite simplistic sound. It's not... It's very great guitar playing from Malcolm, Rhythm and Angus um, on his lead. Don't get me wrong, but it's nice kind of simple riffs. There's nothing much to it. It's very much straightforward rock rhythm section just holds it together i always say phil rudd i envy him because he's got quite an easy gig he's not he's a great drummer but very solid he knows exactly his role in the band he knows his role completely in the songs which is a sign of a great drummer he's not you know going and this isn't a dig but for Mike Portnoy, who's adding in all these intricacies and stuff like that, Danny Carey, you know, these drummers are amazing. But also I think a sign of a great drummer and bass player, just rhythm section in general, is knowing your role in the song. And, you know, Phil Rudd definitely knows his role in the song and within the band, just to keep that rhythm straight through. Nothing fancy, nothing flashy. And he does an amazing job. A lot of it is straightforward 4-4 four, four rhythms. The bass is sitting on top of that. We don't hear huge bass fills going through or, you know, these incredible intricate parts. It's very straightforward. And that formula has worked for ACDC for all of these years, right up to last year's uh, latest record. And that's great. And the fans love it. And they know what they're going to get. It's not when you get... Other bands where, you know, they haven't released stuff in four, five, six, seven years and you're not really sure where the sound's going to evolve to. If it's going to be as great, if it's not going to be as great. ACDC, you know what you're going to get from each and every record, pretty much. Let's have a look at the track listing. Um, so, side one, it's a long way to the top if you want a rock and roll. Rock and roll singer, the Jack and Livewire. On to side two, we have TNT, Can I Sit Next to You Girl, Little Lover, She's Got Balls, and High Voltage rounding off the record. So a few of those tracks I'm sure are familiar, even if you're not a huge ACDC fan, I'm sure at some point you've heard It's a Long Way to the Top if you want to rock and roll. Probably Livewire, definitely TNT, maybe High Voltage as well. I think everybody knows an ACDC track. Even if it's Highway to Hell or Back in Black, for example, you're probably going to know an ACDC track. Let's have a little look inside. So, shown the, um, the artwork on the front and back there. Let's look at the inner sleeve. So, it's kind of interesting, this. I, if I'm honest, I haven't had a massive look and read of this. But, lots of pictures and then some information. Um, interestingly enough, it's, it's just, just having a little read there. It mentions about that Rolling Stone uh, review that they did. Their review on 16th of December labelled the album and ACDC themselves as an all-time low in hard rock and parentally advised, albeit between the lines. Basically calling them crude and rude Australians, which they kind of are. 
Um, lots of information there about the record. Um, right here, we can actually see, I'm going to hold that a little closer. We can see the Australian version of High Voltage, the Australian version of TNT, and then right here is the alternate cover for High Voltage, which again, I'm not sure if that was uh, European, maybe. But yeah, flyers, pictures, and that carries on to the back. Um, so more information, more pictures of the band right there. Nice picture of Bon Scott. And then um, all the typical uh, production notes and where it was recorded and re recording notes and everything just down the side right there. So quite a lot going on there. Nice bit of information. I slide out the record. Um, it's pretty much the same on side A and side B. We can see right there the big famous red ACDC logo, which we don't get on the front cover. Um, but obviously this is 2009 uh, reissue, so obviously a bit more modern, so we get that nice ACDC logo. And track listing. And obviously high voltage there. We get the same on side B. Nothing different right there. And black, as it always is. So, you know, I've mentioned, I'm not going to go through too much track for track um, on this one, because, you know, I've mentioned quite a lot already about the sound. Uh, this one is very bluesy. We have a lot of blues-influenced tracks um, on this record. The Jack, which if you've ever seen ACDC Live, you'll know the Jack is extended for a good, like, 20 minutes or so. But that is just feeding off that riff going around, that real bluesy riff um, coming through. Little Lover, which for me is one of my favourite tracks on this record. Again, very bluesy, very soft. Um, before it builds up into this sort of snarly chorus, Bon Scott sort of snarling out the words Little Lover. Um, what else? Livewire is an interesting one, actually. It's got um, It's got a passage which... Sounds very similar in it to Whole Lot of Rosie. So a couple of albums later, we had Whole Lot of Rosie. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where the guitars fade down. There's a passage out where the guitars fade down, fade down. And there's a bit in Live Wire which is very similar. So I think with it, ACDC, there are quite a few recycled riffs and recycled passages as such. But again, it works. It really does work. There's lots of innuendos in the music, um, lots of, sort of sexual connotations in the lyrics and the lyrical content. We talk about how hard it is to make it in a band with it with the opening track. We talk about Bon Scott wanting to be a rock and roll singer in that second track, how his parents might want him to do something very different, but he wants to be a rock and roll singer. It doesn't matter what anyone says, he's going to do it. You know, lots of, like with um, Can I Sit Next to You Girl, Little Lover, She's Got Balls. All of those, you know, lots of innuendos in the music, which has always been the case with ACDC. Um, great closing track with High Voltage. I think that's such a, a really solid, great track. Um, and a nice way to close off a record. Like I say, for me, Little Lover is right up there. One of my favourites. I love that chorus when it builds up. Get that snarly vocal, which you hear from Bon Scott a lot. Um, but yeah, I think this is a really solid first opening to the world of ACDC. It's gritty. It's raw. What you'd want is, is not polished with the production that you may get in later ACDC albums. It is very gritty. It's dirty sounding. It's full of spit and snarl, not just from Bon Scott, but from Angus. You know, when you see him looking like that, you know he's up for a fight. He's spitting, he's snarling his guitar parts here. It's just a great rock and roll record. Um, 
when you think of great rock and roll bands, for me, I think of those gritty sounding, dirty sounding bands, proper dirty rock and roll. Stuff like Motorhead used to churn those sort of things out. AC DC is another one. Even some Aerosmith before they went sort of mega arena polished band. Um, it would be sort of raw, unedited, almost gritty rock and roll. And that's what I like most about this. And that shines through in abundance. It's a good sounding record. Um, dynamically, great. I'm really happy with it. I'm really glad I picked it up. I actually found Back in Black in the same record store, which you can probably find in any record store. And this won it over for me, funnily enough. Um, I read a little bit into the Back in Black pressing I found and it didn't rate it as the best, whereas this um, got some pretty decent reviews. So I'm glad I went with it. High Voltage by ACDC, the first international release by the band, showing the world who Angus Young and Co are. Go and pick this one up. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Smash the bell. Get all your notifications. Smash the like button. Whatever it is. Do it all for me. Share this uh, video out. Share this channel out. Let's build up the channel as per normal. I will be back with more vinyl appreciation videos for you guys real soon. Don't forget, just finished for now, my download memory series. So go and check all those. Every download from 2004 to 2019, talked about, share some memories. Go and check those ones out. Got a few more different musical content um, videos coming out soon for you guys. So keep an eye on the channel. But for now, rock and roll, everybody. Rock and roll. Angus is telling you to go out and rock and roll. Go and buy vinyl, go and listen to vinyl. I'll see you all real soon.